Good morning. So I know there are a lot of you out there who deal with shoulder pain, shoulder discomfort, or things going on in the shoulder neck region. And I wanted to throw out a few things to be able to help you work and deal with some of those issues. A couple of things you gotta know first, the anatomy, you gotta work with the bones. So here I have my friend, the shoulder scapula arm. This would be my left shoulder. This would be my left arm. We've got the scapula, the shoulder blade on the back. We've got the collarbone right here in the front. And right in that little space there that creates the socket, we've got the arm bone. Now, what happens for a lot of us, we get this impingement in the front of the shoulder, this pain, so you have a hard time lifting the arm forward and up or side and up, and it gets really tight and really pinched. That's one of the most common things I hear people complaining about. And so, if you can see here with the shoulder, and this is like the quick, this is the, without knowing much, just throwing it at you information. What happens to a lot of us is instead of the shoulder blade sitting nicely on the back, it ends up coming forward. It gets pulled forward because the pec right here is really tight and it'll it's connected to the scapula and it'll pull that scapula forward and down and if that pec stays tight that shoulder blade stays there and if that shoulder blade stays there we don't have mobility so the key with shoulder health is we need mobility full range in the shoulder blade and in the socket and we need the strength to support it so it's a balancing act again between flexibility and the strength of the muscles, but then also the mobility and stability of the joints. So going back to that tight pec, if that muscle, if that tissue is pulling the scapula forward and locking it down, what's gonna happen there is the shoulder blade is gonna create like a roof right here. It's gonna create a roof on the arm so that it can't do this full beautiful lift or this full beautiful range of motion because if you can see here if this goes forward and the arm tries to go up it gets stuck so there's literally a blockage so when you're feeling like it's stuck that's because it is so the other piece of the picture aside from getting that scapula down the back and out of the way is that the arm bone sometimes is rotated in and tight in. So we've got this. This is a very common posture for so many of us because of the work we do. We work on computers, we're driving, we're holding things, we're carrying things. The front muscles of us get really, really tight, which causes then an imbalance and a weakness in the back muscles. So our goal to balance it all out is to start to create space in the front or stretch in the front that will give us the opportunity then to work strength in the back and vice versa. If you can work some strength in the back, it'll start to bring some space and stretch in the front. So getting back to that arm bone, if it's locked in, if it's tight in, that's even more impingement, more blocking for there to not have that easy glide in that ball and socket joint. So there's a lot of congestion that can build up in the front of that socket. So the other piece of the picture in order to get more range is to get that arm bone back into the right place. So we got to work it into a little external rotation so it settles more back or actually into the center of the socket. Because for a lot of us, that arm bone is living a little bit forward and shoved forward in the socket. So you can see that with the combination of the tight muscles in the front, what it does to the bones is it's going to pull this all forward. And then like I mentioned, it's kind of like a roof or like a cap on the arm so that it can't move freely. And that's mainly talking about the bones. Then of course we're dealing with tightness too. So it's a, again a balancing act between the muscles, the bones, the bones, the muscles, and working all of that to stay nice and healthy. So how we're gonna work on that today, this morning, it's very, very simple. You're just simply going to work either sitting or standing. You're going to just shrug the shoulders up and then melt the shoulders down. 
And so what this is going to do for you is it's going to start to unglue your scapula a little bit, getting it to move on the back of the ribs. So you're moving away any adhesions, any stiffness that doesn't need to be there. And that's going to be really helpful in that process to then start to activate the back muscles. So then from that shrug, start to rotate the arms, spin the arms back so that you can also squeeze the shoulders back and then melt the shoulders down on the ribs and then reset so shrug the shoulders up spin the arm bones back into external rotation use that to squeeze your scapula together and then melt it down without letting it come forward again we'll do that a couple times so it's a shrug this is going to help shorten your traps which can get really bulky and tight so it shortens them gives them a little break Plus, it's going to get your shoulders, your scapula, over the hill of your rib cage that sometimes is blocking it from getting back. The arms spiral, and then those shoulders reset in a strong position down the back, not forcing it, but just settling it, and then reset. So again, we shrug. We're going to spiral the arms, get up and over that hill of your rib cage, and then settle down on the back of the hill. Feel the strength across the shoulder blades and at the back of the arms. And really, so let's do that one more time. Shrug, shortening the upper muscles of the shoulders, getting over the hill, and now activating the posterior back muscles of your shoulder blades and your arms, and then resetting the shoulder blades down the back. So now you can feel lower traps working, rhomboids working and the deep rotators of your shoulders, which is so important, those rotator cuff muscles, and it's helping to counterbalance the bossy pecs and upper traps that take over for most of us and keep us out of our full potential and our full strength and health of our shoulders. So that's that in a small nutshell, kind of simplified. It is simple, but it's also complex. Our bodies are very complex, but I'm hoping that that helped you to see your shoulders in a little simpler way and give you that little aha moment of why there might be some of this complaint going on in your shoulders. One other thing I wanna leave you with, just to kind of plant the seed and we can get into this a little bit more later, is that you don't always just want your scapula squeezing down, down the back. That's when we're talking about just your normal everyday posture standing with your arms by your sides. That's setting your functional posture. But then our arms don't just stay there. Our arms move, thankfully, they move in all these different directions. So you wanna remember that when the arms move in any direction, up or overhead, whether to the sides or to the front, the shoulder blades are doing something a little bit different. So if I'm just normal and in my functional posture position, this is kind of where that scapula lays. But now if I start to take the arm out to the side and up, that scapula is gonna move out at the bottom. And then it's also gonna move down. So this is called rotation. The scapula is gonna rotate and it should, we wanna let it. If we glue that scapula down or if it's glued down, that's where we start to get again impingements and then our shoulder starts to suffer. Then that's when the bossy trap muscles have to take over because there's no movement here in the joint. So you're going to lift the arm and when you lift your arm know that the bottom edge of your scapula comes out, it rotates out kind of like a wing. And then when it comes down that scapula goes in. So that is the bone rhythm, the arm to scapula bone rhythm as you lift the arm and even forward. You can see that also affects the collarbone. These guys are always talking to each other. One can't move without the other. So it's like a domino effect, always moving the collarbone, scapula, and arm bone. Even the sternum is joined in with that. If any one of these areas is stuck, again, we have problems. So that's why every day you want to work on setting your proper posture or your optimal posture for function. And then you want to work on range of motion, so allowing your arm to move in the different planes every day. So you're going to want to work on also not only just that elevation and depression 
and the retraction and all the depression that we did in the exercise before, but you're gonna wanna work really good internal and external rotation of the arm bones. You're gonna wanna work flexion of the arms, extension of the arms. You're gonna wanna work abduction of the arms, adduction of the arms. So that's why things like arm circles are really nice. If you've got that joint space in a good place, it can feel really great and it's very necessary. And you wanna always be easy and gentle with it. You don't wanna force it and just be like, I'm supposed to arm circle, it hurts, but I'm gonna crank it. Yeah, so just move in a range that works for you at the time and over time, you'll start to increase your range of motion. And then that's gonna, again, create that more optimal positioning for posture and for movement. So if you wanna see a few more videos that are a lot more in depth, allow you to go through all those ranges of motion with different props like rollers and balls and things like that, you can go to my website, www.wainaniwellness.com, and I've got a bunch of videos there that can help you. In fact, I just put one up specifically for shoulders yesterday. Hope you can enjoy that and use that to your benefit. And also you can go to my YouTube, which is White Nanny Wellness as well. And you'll see some videos there too. And so I hope that you can help yourself with these tips and with this information and these exercises. And I wanna, I wanna hear back from you and see if these exercises are helping you to get better, healthier, and more amazing shoulders, the shoulders of your dreams, so that you don't have to be held back from anything or feel like you can't do the things that you want to do or even think about worse things like maybe having to go for surgeries or anything like that. Okay, I think I covered it all. Any questions, please leave it in the comments below and I'll talk to you soon.